All right, welcome back. So in this video, we're gonna be showing you what my favorite exercise is to start off with dealing with piriformis syndrome. So before we do that, let's just talk about this real quick. Piriformis syndrome is that pain on the backside of the hip. It's often extremely painful for many people, although some people can have a minor case of it. If you're watching this, then you're probably searching for something when many other things haven't worked. So with piriformis syndrome, that high degree of sensitivity back there is often a big problem for exercise selection because obviously with this area, we're trying to improve endurance, tolerance, strength, and so forth to try to reduce pain and restore function. The most commonly prescribed exercise, oftentimes right off the bat, is the glute clamshell exercise, which is laying on your side just like this and lifting your top knee up. Because as we lift that top knee up, we are going into abduction and external rotation of the hip, which is going to work and activate all of the muscles on the backside of the hip here. Now there's a problem with this exercise for many people. And the problem is this area is usually so sensitized that doing this, even just with the weight of the knee, oftentimes is very triggering for this area and can result in flare-ups. Not only short-term, like a day of a flare-up, but individuals who are dealing with more um, advanced cases of piriformis syndrome or more sensitive cases might get days of a flare-up doing a simple clamshell exercise. Now, of course, the idea is we know that underneath or behind the scenes, oftentimes it's okay to exercise with piriformis syndrome. The problem is that that doesn't make it necessarily easier in terms of having to fight through that discomfort. Now, if you do anything long enough, most people are going to accommodate and eventually it'll get less sensitive. But again, it's pretty hard to stay motivated where you're hurting a lot every time you do an exercise. So one of the ways that I've been able to get around this is to create a few walkbacks of the clamshell exercise so we can reduce the load and we can increase tolerance to being able to perform that movement essentially as a pre-movement. Now, of course, you could always you know, stop and go do stretching, piriformis stretching, etc. That actually can be very sensitizing for some people as well, but it's still difficult to make the jump from a stretch to a movement in terms of uh, going from there, for example, to the clamshell. So this is a good intermediary step, but you can certainly start off with it right away. So the exercise is called a sideline hip shift. So that's what we're gonna show you here on the skeleton, how it works, and then of course I'm gonna demo it in person as well. So, okay, so in this sideline position, we have the hip and knee positioned at a 90 degree angle, and what we're going to be doing is doing a sliding maneuver where we're actually sliding the knee and the hip forward and backward. And we're gonna be covering the range of movements that the hip can offer us. So for example, if I were to take this leg here and then I were to pull it backward and I'll move my hand out of the way of the camera, you could see that the pelvis and the hip is gonna move in a backward direction. That is gonna be adduction and internal rotation of the hip. As the knee slides forward, there's gonna be abduction and external rotation of the hip. And in this motion, when we slide it forward, we're going to be activating or utilizing the glute musculature in order to do that reaching maneuver. Now, of course, so that will help us simulate the abduction or that clamshell activity without actually having to lift the leg up into the air, okay? So this sliding forward and that sliding backward motion. Now, obviously I would use this for a number of different things for hip issues and for assistance and mobilization of the, of the spine and so forth. But in this case, it is a wonderful use case for the piriformis syndrome issue. Okay, so to unload the leg, we would just place a ball between the knees. So that way the leg or the knee can rest on top of the ball as it's doing its sliding maneuver. And that way we are not carrying the weight of the leg. So that is how we do this. And over time, progressively, as we continue to develop uh, reduced sensitivity and getting pain relief during this movement, we can actually ask the person to actually make their knee lighter on the ball without actually lifting it all the way up, bearing all of the weight of the leg. And that way we can make the leg lighter on the ball as we do our shift and we can start to build tolerance in the hip abductor muscles and the piriformis, if you want to think about it that way, to this movement to prepare over the long run for a clamshell if that's what we want to do. Okay, so I'm going to show you this from the front side as well. So we're laying on the side, ball between, hips and knees to 90 degrees. And from here, we anchor our upper body so that our upper body's not rotating. And then we slide that knee forward and backward, okay? 
Now, again, from here we control our range of motion and we only work within a range that feels good. Very often I allow people to start with about 60 seconds of just nice and easy sliding to get nice low intensity threat free movement. And as it feels better, usually it does, you get some increase in range of motion without pain, then you can go a little bit further each direction if tolerated. But I always urge people to work with what's comfortable and it's better off to do less and to build it up over time. So after a couple of days of doing the exercise, if it's feeling better, then you can go a little bit more, but there's no rush. Because some people will say, after I do this for two minutes, it feels a lot better. And then I would say, then don't force the range of motion. You know, enjoy the pain relief first. And as the nerves desensitize and calm down, then you can work as a secondary goal on getting more range of motion because that might not be the primary goal. So as I do that exercise, again, over time, I can say, make this uh, knee a little bit lighter on the ball. So I could just try to de-emphasize or lighten it up on the ball. I'm still not lifting 100% of my weight up, but that will allow me to shift with a little bit more activity in those external hip rotator muscles, okay? and make them work a little bit more. And again, I can start with a small range of motion and then build it up again, okay? So law offers a lot of ability or uh, options here in terms of what you can do to reduce that loading on the hip and allow for low intensity, threat-free movement production. All right, so that's it for this video. I'm sure you're gonna have a lot of questions and uh, comments, be sure to enter those below. I'm curious what happens and what you think about this exercise. I've been using this for many years successfully. It's such a gentle, easy one to do for individuals dealing with piriformis syndrome and one that is easy to build on top of. So I hope that's helpful and uh, be sure to give me a thumbs up if you like this video. Comment below, let me know any of your thoughts, any questions you might have. And of course, be sure to subscribe to the channel so you get notifications of new videos like these upcoming. Thanks for watching.